lucid dreaming. Just out of curiosity, how many people have had a lucid dream before? Show of hands. Almost everybody. How many people have had more than 20 lucid dreams? Wow. Would ask for projection count? A <laughs> uh, little different. Uh, more than 100 lucid dreams? I don't know if you keep track that high, but. Yeah. <laughs> Does everybody know what a lucid dream is? Okay. So, we'll jump into it. so I'm going to give a little presentation. I've always been interested in lucid dreaming. Uh, its limit is nothing. It limits your infinite imagination, and that's what I love about it so much. And I really got into a book actually called Lucid Dreaming, The Gateway to the Inner Self. I highly recommend reading it. Uh, if anybody's interested in getting into this more, it does an excellent in-depth detailing of lucid dreaming, the possibilities of lucid dreaming, what it means, what its potential is, and so I'm going to give a very brief kind of overview of it, hopefully being able to give you guys some useful tips and techniques and maybe some new ideas that you hadn't thought of exploring within the lucid dream realm. So uh, lucid dreaming is really interesting. It wasn't actually until 1975 when it really became more accepted into the scientific community. That was when they first started doing the experiments of communicating from a lucid dreamer to waking reality, where they would have a lucid dreamer give predetermined eye movements, and the person that was awake would register those eye movements, and they would be able to communicate that way. So that was the first time that it was actually really brought into public awareness. Before then, people always kind of dismissed the idea as being impossible. So the real versus the unreal. There's always this debate as to whether you think that a dream is real or unreal. And interestingly enough, in lucid dreaming, your ideas of the real versus unreal can become a mental block in your exploration of lucid dreaming. Um, other blocks can be things like uh, science or theory or cultural biases that we may have that say that things are impossible or not possible within the dreaming realm. So people always feel like lucid dreaming gives you control over the dream, that you have ultimate control and that in itself can also be a hindrance to your lucid dreaming experience. The ego likes to feel in control, it likes to the comfort of control. And the best analogy that the author of that book he came up with when he was trying to deal with people bringing up the issue of control is like a sailor on a sea. The sailor does not control the sea, does not control the wind, he only directs his sails as to where to go. So in lucid dreaming, you don't control the whole dream, you just direct your awareness and your intention where you want it to go and let the dream unfold in that way. Some of the issues that people can have with lucid dreaming, one of them being the fear of the subconscious. When you start delving into your subconscious mind, there can be a lot of worries or concerns that people might have um, with uncovering certain things that they don't want to deal with. And that can be a stumbling block as well. Instead of having a fear for it, it's much better to have a conscious understanding and a healthy respect for your subconscious. Your subconscious is a part of you. So rather than fearing it, respect it and try to engage in a healthy relationship with it. Another issue that people come up with is that dreaming is sacred and there can be sacred messages in it. And when you bring in your ego through lucid dreaming, through awareness, it kind of taints the message, so to speak, that you could be getting from it. Um, but that awareness that you're engaging with, your subconscious that you're engaging with, do you think it's more likely that it would rather engage with you in an unaware state or with higher awareness? When you have a higher awareness in your dream, you're able to engage openly with it and actually find out more than you might not have otherwise and remember and get more out of the dream. And then another one is that 
lucid dreamers are using lucid dream to escape personal growth. That argument can be uh, valid in that some people, you know, you are lucid and you're confronted with a dream figure that represents something and then you decide, well, I'm just going to take off and fly over here. So you can certainly do that, but overall, if you're really getting into the lucid dreaming, it is the exact opposite and you're actually using it for your own personal growth and development. So Carl Jung was saying that the inner ego, um, you can consciously intend to understand its place in its dream through integrating your shadow side. Carl Jung did a lot of work about the shadow side of yourself and you can use dreaming as a conscious investigation into your unconscious. And when you are approached with shadow elements, you can project love and compassion and caring onto them and actually find that you reintegrate them back into yourself rather than kind of taking off and flying around and not dealing with it. So I, I love this uh, description that he gave. It, most people it looked like had a lucid dream. So can I get everybody to close their eyes? And I want you to try to recall that feeling that you have when you suddenly realize this is all a dream. That vibrant sense of power mixed with pleasure and a feeling of confident mastery, all coupled with the joy of realization. I know for me that's definitely one of the most incredible experiences that I've ever had. And for those of you who have not had a lucid dream, I hope that one day you will, or one night I guess, have a lucid dream. and experience that feeling. How many people after having that feeling wake up? Or have at some point? <laughs> so don't feel that if you do. That's Everybody starts that way. It's the first lesson of lucid dreaming in modulating your emotions and controlling your emotions because you find very quickly that if you experience a heightened state of emotion that it can wake you up out of the dream. So <clears throat> there all of these um, <coughs> classifications and that that I'm drawing from are from the book, um, Lucid Dreaming, Gateway to the Inner Self. So he describes five stages of lucid dreaming as you progress along your development of lucid dreaming. So the first one, personal play, pleasure, and pain avoidance. So these are probably the first area where people kind of come up with the flying, with the uh, walking through walls, manipulating things. These are very... Um, we can call them earthly pleasures, I guess, that you kind of get into with that sort of freedom of the dream. And at this point, your main goal is just to maintain the lucidity, to try to extend the lucid dream as long as you possibly can, if you feel. Um, there's also that sort of lost memory effect when you wake up, so if you get into lucid dreaming to learn things and seek knowledge, uh, you might find that you want to wake up after you've received the knowledge so that you can write it down immediately rather than forget it. The second stage, manipulation, movement, and me. So that's really getting into figuring out how to fly, going into outer space, um, manipulating objects, making things appear, disappear. And this is where your um, beliefs and assumptions start playing in about reality and about what you can or cannot do in the dreaming world. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. But part of lucid dreaming is trying to overcome those limitations that you have about different assumptions and beliefs about the dreaming world. And then the third stage, power, preface, and primacy. This is where you get into really seeing what lucid dreaming is all about with experimenting with different um, ways of understanding your subconscious, understanding the awareness of the dream, understanding yourself and the position within the dream, understanding dream characters, and I'm going to get more into that as well, give you guys some ideas. The fourth stage of reflection, reaching out, re-reflection, reaching out, and wonder. So this is where you're really beginning to open up to the dream space, so rather than interacting with the things in the dream, the people, the objects, the environment, you're getting beyond and interacting with what is the dream, the dream space. You can interact with the dream space in different ways. And then the last one is experiencing awareness. And I found this one the most interesting aspect of the book that I read where he describes it as 
understanding your connection to the whole and going beyond the lucid dream, what's beyond the lucid dream behind it. And incredible experiences of describing it as just having a dream of just a blue light for the entire time or being on the sub level below the lucid dream and then being told that he can choose different stairs. This one wakes you up, this one takes you to a lucid dream. So I haven't had any of those experiences yet, but uh, so there's different levels of lucidity that have been proposed in case you've heard people, some people say that every dream that they have is lucid. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So the pre-lucid, you can, you just kind of feel like something's off. Like, oh, that's kind of weird in your dream when you're having it. The sub-lucid, you vaguely start to feel like something's a little off. Like, mm, that really doesn't make sense. But you're still not really cluing in that it's a dream. The semi-lucid is where you realize that you're dreaming, but you just kind of keep going along with it. You don't decide to do anything. You're just like, oh, this is a dream. Okay, just kind of keep going with whatever's coming. The lucid is when you become more lucid and decide to start manipulating things. So talking to characters, moving around, flying, that sort of thing. Fully lucid is when you have complete recollection of your waking life and why you've come into the dream, if you've set out a goal or an experiment before you get into it. And then super lucid is when you are taking that last step to go into um, expanded, just like pure awareness and finding out what's beyond the lucid dream. Some stumbling blocks that you might find along the way is that it's a long process of discovery. And Temptations, fears, and defenses also play into that, uh, and your assumptions about the dreaming. So if you assume uh, this is where you start dealing with, oh, it's all in your mind, or um, you get what you expect. So there's the expectation effect, and there's also that it's all in your mind. And you kind of, you can, what I love about lucid dreaming is that you can design your own experiments to confirm or disprove ideas that you have. And they, can prove it to yourself. So independent agents, these are dream characters, dream figures, or the awareness of the dream. And yeah, so you can talk to them. What do they represent? You can ask them that. Who are they? Character responses, there's different character responses you can get. Sometimes if they just represent a symbol or a thought form, they might just give you gibberish back and it might not make any sense. They can also, once you start talking to them, this is where you get into the expectation effect, whether you believe that everything is just what you expect. Dream figures can start responding in different ways. They can start declaring... It's really interesting, I don't know if everyone's ever done this, but if you start telling certain dream figures that this is your dream and they're all in your mind, they can actually start getting a little upset with you. <laughs> they, like, they'll go, no, they can actually start rationally explaining to you how you're a dream figure in their dream, and they can go a step further to actually prove to you that this is their dream by flying around and manipulating things in the same way that you do. So you really start getting into interesting um, aspects for that. Feeling tone, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that one later when I give one of my own experiences. Review committees, I found this one extremely interesting. I haven't come across this yet, but a panel of dream figures, after he became lucid, started questioning him about certain things as though they were interviewing him and talking amongst themselves whether they felt that he was ready for some information better than this person. Oh, should we give it to him? And then they gave him this book that had some words on it. So. <laughs> Really, uh, so you can ask them who they are, you can find out their perceptions of you. Sometimes they're there to educate or inform you about things. There can be reoccurring dream figures that you see in multiple dreams that can actually try to help you become lucid. So that's, that one's really interesting. I was kind of upset with myself not too long ago, I actually, I had a dream where I was giving a talk on lucid dreaming. I still didn't figure out that I was in a dream. And then guardians and guides you can also um, come across. Uh, sorry, I missed a line here. When you guys are learning to lucid dream, he says that you must learn to focus simultaneously on both the conscious awareness and the dreaming activities. So it's a very tight rope, tight balance that you have to hold between being aware that you're in a dream and 
what's going on in the dream. If you start to focus too much on the dreaming activities, you can lose your lucidity, or if you become inattentive to anything, then you can also lose your lucidity. You have to maintain a neutral stance in your environment. You have to be in your environment and not of your environment. Oh yeah, there's just some tips on uh, conversing. So don't limit the dream character. That's just assuming, telling them that they're in your dream and that they're a part of your mind. Find the most appropriate, aware, or intelligent figures to interact with. So if you find your um, aunt, who you know is pretty off and not all there and kind of talks nonsense, you might not go talk to her because she might not give you the answers that you need. Develop questions in waking state. And that also goes back to just any sort of goal or experiment that you want to conduct. Set it out before you go to bed so that we, when you become lucid, you know what you're there for. Uh, recognize expectation inf effect and your influence. Ask for clarification if you don't understand. Broad questions can lead to uh, cryptic responses. So um, a broad question like, what is my role in life, can lead to a very cryptic response. Uh, and then openness and a desire to learn, not tell them. So you can always ask for advice. If you guys are wanting to learn how to fly, ask a dream character to give you tips. Ask a dream character what something in your dream means. I know there's a lot of uh, dream interpretation books out there. Mm, they can sometimes provide insight, I think, to people, but I find that lucid dreaming is the way to do it because it can mean anything, really. Um, and when you're be able to become lucid and interact with the dream and ask it what it means, and interpret it in your own way, it definitely adds another level to it. And then, so when you guys are setting up experiments, wording is very, very, very important. You have to be very specific with what you're trying to ask or accomplish. And there's uh, sensing and becoming. So if you guys are looking to become a concept, um, an example was becoming a bird or sensing what it was like to be a bird. What lucid dreamers found was that if you ask for the senses of it, you can end up experiencing it from the perception of our human uh, senses, or the five senses that we have. Whereas if you were to become or transform into an owl, then you can get more of a sense of what that is. If you want to become the earth, if you want to experience really anything going on, what, it like, what it's like for a cell to divide. And uh, there are actually some interesting uh, examples of if you request something that you're not ready for, the dream may deny it for you. And then again, just setting up your experiments in the waking life. Focus, intent, and will are three really important things in the dreaming environment. Focus refers to directing your awareness to one aspect of the dream. And that's what you really have to practice when you initially start, is focusing. And if the dream starts to disintegrate, change your focus around, shift your focus around. Has anybody read the Don Juan Carlos Castaneda series? Yeah. He kind of talks about that. If the dream starts to disintegrate or fall apart, shift your focus around. And it takes practice and time to develop your focus. And then intent is what you use to go beyond your limitations and your beliefs and your expectations. When you want to fly somewhere, you're intending yourself to go there. And then will is kind of like the rocket boosters on it. When you learn to turn within and use your emotions, your emotional power, to direct your intent to have something happen. Um, so they kind of follow focus to intent to will. And you'll find that it's a lot of manipulation of the mind. So these are just some... Uh, these are some ideas that you can do within a dream. So talking to dream characters, healing yourself and others, and he writes full chapters on these, so I'm not going to go into too much detail with them. Uh, healing yourself, you can use affirmations, you can use visualizations, you can create light, um, and then he also gets into healing other people. Consciously uh, connecting via telepathy, there's a lot of experiments that have been set up where they'll have a picture hidden that someone will, only one person will know and they'll focus on it and then have a bunch of lucid dreamers try to lucid dream and figure out what the picture is and they've had pretty good success with it. Uh, seeking unknown information and that kind of relates to precognitive dreams. There's some issues with that as to whether it's sort of that self-fulfilling prophecy. So just be aware of that, be aware of the expectation effect, be aware of your um, interpretations of it. but. All of these, you can decide what would prove it to you that these things are possible. 
dream sharing. And then that also relates to one person being lucid, both people being lucid, tips to kind of getting each other to become lucid. Do you have a question? No. Okay. Um, and then interacting with the deceased was another interesting one. Um, trying to meditate in your dream, becoming a color. That relates to becoming a concept as well. Any concept that you can think of, there's no limit to what this is and what you're able to do. Solving a problem that you're working on, going to infinity and beyond, <laughs> expanding space, um, asking for changes in the environment, and then false awakenings are really interesting ones. Has anybody had a false awakening before? My, my most intense one was actually after walking waking life, watching Waking Life, and I had three in a row. That was really interesting. The author of this book said he had seven wow. false awakenings. Uh, so you can ask dream characters questions, what's my role in life, what's in my future, what does this represent? I encourage you also to talk to the dreamscape. Say, a really easy one to start off with is show me something important that I need to be aware of. And just wait and see what happens. Mm -hmm. So these are some tips for getting better at lucid dreaming. Obviously one part of it is actually remembering your dreams. So if right now you feel like you can't remember your dreams, one way to start is just be aware of your feelings in the early morning. Just take note of that. If you don't remember anything, just kind of see how you feel in the early morning. Uh, journaling is probably the best way to enhance your dream recall, and it just helps you also to go back and kind of look and see if there's kind of themes that tie together. But in terms of getting better at lucid dreaming, reality checks is really what it comes down to for a lot of the different techniques. If Has anybody heard of, um, oh, no, the term has escaped me. Basically, it's where you have items that Totems? get, um, oh, tell, tell. Dream, dream, dream images or dream, dream objects. Yeah. Where, let's say I see a certain person on a regular basis during the day. I want to get into the habit every time I see that person to say, am I dreaming? Mm -hmm. So that way when you see them in a dream, you know you're dreaming. Or if there's something that happens often in dreams, connect that to dreaming. But really all it comes down to is getting into the habit of asking yourself, am I dreaming? Mm -hmm. If you can get into the habit of that during your waking life, then it'll start appearing in your dreaming life. And in order to do reality checks, a really great one that I practice is retracing how did I get here? What led me up to this point? Because often in dreams, that's what will clue you in because you can't go back past five or ten minutes of experience. And then you'll realize that your environment or what's going on doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Informal suggestion is like what we're doing right now. We're having a lucid dreaming talk. You guys, I'm actually curious, can everybody post up on the Evolver group if they have a lucid dream tonight? Because mm -hmm. that is one way of having an informal suggestion. You listen to a talk, you go to a conference, you read about it, and you have a lucid dream. Probably why I had my three false awakenings after waking life. <laughs> the other one's formal suggestion, so that's kind of dream incubation before you go to bed, intending on having a lucid dream. Tonight I will have a lucid dream. I will recognize when something does not make sense and become lucid. Uh, you can come up with whatever, whatever you want. You can incorporate your goal or experiment that you want to do into it. Uh, finding your hands was one proposed by Don Juan in the Carlos Castaneda where he, it can be really any object, but he said your hands because your hands are always with you. Where you just sit in bed before you go to bed just looking at your hands, staring at your hands, staring at your hands, you start to get tired. Just keep looking at your hands, let your eyes go cross-eyed. Just keep looking at them until basically you're so tired you have to go to bed. And then if you keep practicing this, your hands will kind of come up in your dream and you go, oh, I'm dreaming. I've never really used this technique too much, but the key for any of these is repetition. So you have to do it more than one or two nights in a row. You have to be doing it on a regular basis. Um, mild is a technique that uses mnemonics and it, a nice little abbreviation for it is to memorize. So this one is used when you wake up during the night and you did not have a lucid dream. So you go back and replay your dream that you just had in as much detail as you can. And then you intend to become lucid. So when I go back to sleep, when I have a dream, I will become lucid. And then you become lucid and then you do it. Or sorry, the L is that you replay the dream that you are lucid in it. So you memorize, replay the dream, you intend to become lucid replay the dream as though you were lucid, and then go into the dream. And then wake back to bed is a technique I don't know too much about, but 
I think it's where you kind of wake up a little bit before you have to get up out of bed and you kind of stay up for about an hour, not really doing too much, and then go back to bed. It kind of uses the uh, napping. I know napping is usually a time that you can get a lot more potential for lucid dreaming. Or meditating. Or meditating. Mm -hmm. So just some tips. Stay focused. Develop a common practice. Place emotional issues to the end. So if there is something emotionally charged that you want to experiment with, save it till the end of your dream in case you wake up. Um, handle recurring motions, repetition, so just practicing it over and over and over again. Have a goal in mind. Keep it fun though. And practice, announce your intent, and then singing is also another technique for kind of maintaining the lucidity a little bit longer. One thing that I found that's really helped me is when I feel the dream starts to break down, you have to focus on something that's in the dream. So I just rub my hands like this and focus on the feeling of rubbing my hands together. And that has worked really well for maintaining lucidity longer and staying in the dream. And then practicing. So when you get into this, there you can have experiences that really kind of Mm, rock your understanding of reality and what's potential when you start really getting into the ex experiments that you can do in lucid dreaming. So, um, you know, if you need to take a break, go for walks, talk to your friends, kind of reground yourself again before you kind of get into it. Reflect on your experiences and try to get what you can out of it before you move on. So, did anybody have any questions? I wanted to share one of my dreams that I had and then maybe we'll open it up for 10 15 minutes for any other. Question, right? Yes. What would you say of a blurring between waking life and the dream world? Like, I guess I'm feeling that this particular reality could in itself be a dream. And this is a very lucid one. <laughs> what are my thoughts on it? Yeah, I'm just curious. Oh, yeah, and maybe I, anybody else, I just thought I'd throw it out there. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Absolutely, especially. Cool. I think this reality is just as unstable as the lucid realm. Mm -hmm. We're just all pretty good at holding it. <laughs> <laughs> Most. Yeah. Every time that I practice trying to become lucid, I don't really ever have much success in actually becoming lucid in my dreams, but I'll look for dream signs and they're just everywhere in my waking life. So it's like I can't actually break into it in the dreams, but I look around like, yep, yeah, it's a dream, it's a dream, it's a dream. And sometimes I'll even actually like, when I question if it's a dream, I'll like look over and I'll see something that says it's a dream. And that's happened like countless, 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 countless times. So. There's, there's other checks you can do. Uh, waking Light suggests one where you can flick light switches and if the lights don't go on and off. Um, you can try putting your fingers through your hands, look at a digital clock, look away and then look back again. They're all kind of really great tips for kind of checking if you're in a dream. Um, just on the reality checks thing, and you were saying behind your hands, uh, as I started having more lucid dreams for a little while there, all my reality checks stopped working, so light switch, they turned on and off, <laughs> looking away, looking back at the word, it was still fine, like couldn't push through mirrors, nothing. The only thing that continued to prevail was my hand and looking at my hands and asking whether or not I was dreaming and counting them, you know, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, no, wait, hold on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, wait, 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 and then like, we click in, that was the only one that never yeah. changed to be more solid, it's almost like the dream, it's like, oh, you want to be lucid, then we're going to make this as real as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I find that fits right along in with having assumptions where I've been in lucid dreams where I've decided to play along. So as you said, it's like semi-lucid where I'm, I'm in it. I want to know what this dream's trying to show me. And all of a sudden I'm on a mission to like go and plant a love bomb somewhere like I had a dream the other night. <laughs> That's literally what it was. I was on like this intense mission and all of a sudden all of my worries and assumptions about what could happen if, of these people who were noticing me were thinking and I got attacked because I expected it to happen. I was worried. So mm -hmm. again, it, you have to be neutral. It's you have to be so zen, mm -hmm. just calm. You can't react. You can't. It's sometimes you don't want to be happy about something or anything. You're just very, very detached. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a lesson, kind of like we should relate this into our everyday lives. Mm -hmm. You know, like how when we just surrender to things that happen to us in our day to day lives, it's exactly we end up exactly where we're supposed to be with right knowledge and we stay in that zen 
mode where it's, we start having expectations and everything kind of blows up on you. Yeah. So it's just taking that same knowledge into your into any state that you go into. Really yeah. Uh, so oh yeah, go ahead. I was wondering if you knew uh, anything about like dream yoga and if this is the same uh, thing. Like I don't know mm -hmm. too much about he, it. He he, I, I got a book on dream yoga. Um, there are a couple lines in it that kind of weirded me out, so I put it down. But I'm gonna pick it up again. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, what is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it was, there was a line that said something like, the critics will not be allowed into the kingdom of Jerusalem or something like that. But, but, <laughs> there's a lot of other good stuff. In it, but, <laughs> I haven't read it yet. He touches on dream yoga and kind of defined it as the essentially you're practicing lucid dreaming but you're trying to develop your abilities of awareness to the point that you have such an understanding of it that you when you die you avoid reincarnation essentially by just having that ability of well awareness to be able to carry it wherever you want afterwards that's interesting mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so i wanted to share with you guys uh one of my lucid dreams i think i had over the summer that was probably by far one of the most profound. I call them their experiences. They're as real to me as this. Uh, you know, I remember it as well as last week. So, oh, before I jump into it, feeling tone. That's what kind of got me into this um, dream. What I was going to go into it with the author of the book. He uh, heard about what's called a feeling tone or your resonance frequency or that sort of thing where he decided that he wanted to hear it. So he became lucid and went out and started yelling to the dream, I want to hear my feeling tone. And then this cone started coming down over top of him, making this really strange noise, and it enveloped him totally, and then his whole body and every sort of feeling or sense that he had of who he was just started disintegrating. And then he merged awarenesses with some other awareness that was watching this event happen and watching himself dis disappear and disintegrate and then started thinking, oh no, I'm going to start losing everything of Robert. I better get together Robert. And he started like pulling and fishing all of his memories and everything he thought that Robert was and then kind of reformed himself again. So that's what got me into this one. So I, that was what I was going into this dream with. But it was kind of at our house, and um, I became lucid and kind of walked out here, and um, a bunch of our friends were loading up some DJ equipment that they had from the house out into their truck, and so I walked over and I asked one of them what is in store for my future, and then he gave me some answer, but you know, it was kind of that weird tightrope, I didn't really understand what he was saying, and I kind of asked for clarification. He just kind of laughed and said, if I missed it, I missed it. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad, so sad. So I was like, all right, whatever. So I go outside, and then a couple of my other friends are out on the street. So I go up to them, and I say, what is my purpose in life? And he turns to me and goes, just keep it simple, man. It's just to wake up. Just wake up. And I went, okay, fair enough. <laughs> and then while I'm talking to them, there is a little bit of a commotion a uh, little ways away on the street. And it turns out that... They had loaded up the truck and started driving away and ran over this girl and now she is lying unconscious on the floor, on the ground outside. So everybody's freaking out, but I'm lucid so I'm not really too concerned with what's happened. But I walk over and I go, I wonder if I can heal her, revive her. So I kind of go over and put my hands over and focus my intent on healing her and then lo and behold she wakes up. And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, you kind of did it, you did it, sort of thing. <laughs> and then I went, okay, no, but I'm here. I wanted to try this feeling tone. So I continued walking down the street, and I started yelling up to the sky, I want to hear my feeling tone. I want to hear my feeling tone. Nothing was happening, nothing was happening, so I kind of reworded it. I want to hear my resonance frequency. I want to hear, you know, this. Nothing was happening. I started getting a little frustrated with it. Um, that's also a block. So try not to get frustrated if it's happening. But what happened instead of what I was expecting was, if you can imagine, it was middle of the afternoon, the sun was up, all of a sudden the sun started moving across the sky, almost as if the earth just started rotating a lot quicker. And it started rotating, the sun went, and it went down, 
And then all the stars started coming up, except instead of stars, they were galaxies and nebula and whoa, whoa. all of that stuff that's right there, except we can't see. Like most of those, it, I don't know if you guys see space pictures of that stuff, but a lot of them are like the size of the moon, three times the size of the moon. So they're all there, but we just can't see them. But I could see them, and the whole sky, just this blanket of galaxies and nebulas just roll over top of me. And I just broke down into tears. It was the most profound, beautiful, like words cannot describe what this experience was for me. I just started bawling. And I dropped down to my knees, and then I was just so grateful for this experience. And then I woke up, and I was still crying. And I was just, <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> so that one's really stuck with me. I just wanted to share that one with you. That was uh, quite an enjoyable experience. So, um, I don't know if anybody else has a dream or anything that they want to share. That was a dream or... <clears throat> I had a similar experience to that one, where I was back at the Mayan ruins I visited in Belize in this dream, and that's when I became lucid because I recognize I don't even remember how I got there. And then I looked down the slope and it all turned into fresh powder. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, and then all of a sudden, like all these staircases started showing up, telling me I could get out of the powder and like climb to a higher point. And it just felt like really hard work. So I said, screw that. And I just jumped into the snow and just started like, almost like swimming through this stuff. And it was just so blissful. Because I've done a lot of really sweet stuff in lucid dreaming, and something that simple to me, I woke up crying, and like I could hear myself, I woke myself up because I was in my room letting out this like exaltation of just like, ah, just like absolute, <laughs> absolute bliss, man, just like tears rolling, it was awesome. <laughs> um, I can talk about how like powerful healing can be in a dream. <clears throat> Um, a friend of mine, a close friend of mine and I, we dream share a lot, and uh, we went through a thing where we had had some issues in our friendship going on, and we hadn't really talked to each other for like almost a year, and then we ended up having a dream share together where we essentially like healed our relationship through the dream share, and it was like the next day, like phone rings, it's the lands on the phone, and we were just like... <laughs> but it's just, it's like really, really powerful what you can do in that realm and I think it's like not to be underestimated that connection that we share with each other inherently mm -hmm. and like through collective consciousness and how we can really mm -hmm. connect with each other through that dream world too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. An interesting thing is, which has been mentioned in some of the books I've been reading lately, I've been reading a lot of books on Buddhism. And uh, I've always had an interest in it, so I figured I'd pursue it. I just feel more inclined to pursue it this year with all the energy that's going on. But uh, I found that since I've been getting in, delving into this more and more, like I'm starting to meet like the Dalai Lama and my dreams and crap like that, mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. see all these monks and stuff showing up mm -hmm. out of nowhere, and like it's weird. Like, but it, the books confirm that. You know, don't be surprised if you start dreaming about this or like, mm -hmm. I'll start to be mindful in my dreams, which is really unusual because I've never experienced that before. So like I'll be having an argument with someone in a dream and then I'll realize that I have a choice not to react and I'll say, no, I don't want to be mean. I don't want to swear this person. I'm just going to be nice mm -hmm. and I'm going to, you know, react in a loving way. And mm -hmm. I find it's just so unusual having that happen in a dream because it starts to, you start to see how, you know, the two you know, reality isn't that much different in the sense that, you, I mean, just as you have a choice in a dream, you have a choice to, right here and now, right? Like, it's just neat. Something to ponder on, I guess. Cool. Um, just before we go into the next like, how to induce one of these, there are also some isochronic tones mm -hmm. that can help drop you down into the right brainwave state right when you're going to sleep and then kind of pull it back up. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to do it like once you've gotten to sleep. So that's something to experiment with. So you too? Okay. Yeah, um, you can look up binaural beats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They would want, it would, it would be isochronic tones, yeah, where I had one. 